Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are showing you four budget-friendly vegan dinners and these are all the dinners from last week's video where we did the... All bar one. All bar one. <laughs> we ran out of days. Um, just really, last night I was really craving pie and mash and it just wasn't on the meal plan. So, sorry guys. But we do have four of the dinners from our um, little budget food shop which had the meal plan on it. So all of these meals are using ingredients that you can get from Lidl. Uh, maybe there's a couple of herbs and spices that have gone in, but essentially this is all Lidl recipes, all whole foods, all really tasty home-cooked meals. Yes, so all super budget friendly, like lots of beans um, and pulses and things like that. Mm -hmm. So not not using any of the like alternative meat products, which tend yeah, to be Yeah, they can be quite expensive. expensive. So, anyway, yeah. none of these dinners use the meat replacements. They're all really delicious, and let's just get started with the first one. To kick things off, we're starting with a sweet and earthy aubergine and tofu tray bake. This is a variation on a stir-fry type meal that we make all the time, but we've made it even easier by adapting it to be a tray bake. To start out, we're going to be chopping up firm tofu and aubergine into bite-sized cubes and adding it to a mixing bowl along with the seasonings, which is a mix of grated ginger, dark soy sauce, rice wine vinegar, for a bit of sharpness, agave for some sweetness to round it out, and cooking oil. If you've not got dark soy in, don't worry about it for the tofu and aubergine. Dark is better for cooking and light is really for dressing, but we've used the light stuff in the past for both parts of this recipe and it's turned out totally fine. A sauce like this is really versatile and could be used for all sorts of stir fries and cooking just like this. Give the tofu and aubergine a good toss in the cooking sauce, but be gentle with the tofu as it can easily break. Turn everything out onto a lined baking sheet and cook in the oven at 200 degrees for 25 minutes until the tofu is nice and golden and the aubergine is just beginning to catch on the edges. Whilst this is in, we're going to make up the satay sauce, which is of course peanut butter, some ginger for a little kick, light soya sauce, rice wine vinegar, and agave syrup. Mix everything together. If it's too thick and won't pour easily, add some water little by little in to help it get to a better consistency. This is a dish that could be served on either rice or noodles, but we've gone for some rice and seasoned that with a little light soy sauce. We really love recipes that have a tray bake element to them. You can just pop it in the oven and forget about it for a little bit. So everything's basically ready at this point to serve up. So you're just going to add the tofu and the aubergine on top of the rice, drizzle that with loads of delicious satay sauce. For a bit of extra garnish, we have gone with some spring onions and a little bit of coriander just chopped roughly and sprinkled over the top. And for a final bit of garnish, we've also gone with some black sesame seeds. And there you have it, our delicious aubergine and tofu tray bake. God, it's so good. Honestly, nothing beats a satay sauce. It's sweet and creamy and nutty and fragrant and, yes, yeah, super kind of comfort. Is it comfort food? The next recipe doesn't really have a proper name. It's kind of a bit of a mishmash of foods and it's very much inspired by Mediterranean flavours. Um, so the first thing you want to do is make a beetroot salsa and that's just simply chopped up beetroot, red onion and dill. You can use dried dill like we've done here to save money or you can use fresh. Then you want to add in some olive oil, salt and pepper and some lemon juice and try not to get too many pips in like we did. So you want to give that a nice stir and then you can just leave that to one side when it's done and move on to the next step. So the next thing that you want to do is cut up your courgette into long ribbons. You could also use aubergine if you can't get courgettes, um, but I think courgettes are cheaper for, so if you're, if you're going for the budget option then courgettes are the better choice of vegetable. So you just want to mix that up with some olive oil and salt and pepper and then we've done ours on a griddle pan. Um, but you could do this just in a normal pan or under the grill or you could even roast it as well, uh, whatever you fancy. And then whilst that's cooking, we're going to make some butter bean mash. 
So you want to get some tinned butter beans that are already cooked and then you put them in the pan just to heat them up really. Add in some vegan butter, lots of lemon, garlic. We've gone for garlic granules just because it's a bit easier than chopping up garlic sometimes and it gives more of that punchy garlic flavour and then salt and pepper again. And then plate it all up. Uh, you start with the mash and then you add on the courgettes, the salsa and then we like to serve it with some fresh greens like rocket or some watercress, basically your favourite green. And that's it, it's very simple, um, very fresh and super delicious. Now it's getting into the autumn and winter months, this recipe is perfect. It's a big one pot Spanish inspired stew and we have released a recipe quite similar to this before using vegan chorizo, um, but to keep things simple and cheap we've swapped out the chorizo for extra beans and pulses. So you just want to start off with some garlic and onion, chop that up nice and fine and then add that into a pan with some olive oil. And then you're going to add in some red pepper. We've done ours in cubes, nice little bite-sized pieces. You could chuck in different types of pepper here or any other vegetables that you've got in the fridge would be great to go in at this stage. We then add in some sweet potato and again just in nice little bite-sized chunks so that it doesn't take too long to cook once in the pan. And then we also add in some little cherry tomatoes but we keep them whole just because they add a nice texture once they're in the dish. So once your garlic and onions are all cooked off you want to add all of those vegetables in, give it a nice stir and then you're going to add in your chickpeas, make sure you've drained them and then also we've added cannellini beans but you could do butter beans or uh, red kidney beans maybe, basically whatever your favourite bean is. Then you're going to add in your chopped tomatoes and stock and then lots of nice herbs and spices, so lots of paprika, um, you could do a mixed herb just to keep things simple or... And then all you're going to do is bring it to a boil on the hob and pop the lid on and simmer it for about 45 minutes. You want to make sure that all of the sweet potato is nice and soft and that all your liquid is reduced. Then you're going to add in lots and lots of spinach, um, basically however much you like. I think we went for a couple of big handfuls. And then we like to add in some fresh parsley as well at the end, just roughly chop it. Give it a nice stir and then you're basically ready to serve. We have made sure that there is a little bit of liquid left just because it's nice to dip your crusty bread. It really soaks it up all lovely. But this is also super great for leftovers because you can just store it in the fridge in a big container and pop it in the microwave and it's ready for lunch the next day. You don't necessarily have to serve this with bread because it is pretty hearty, especially if you're having it as more of a soup. Um, it has got all the potato and all the protein and everything in it as it is. It's just nice, as I said earlier, to dip your bread mm, into the sauce really at the end. It's got like such a nice spice to it as well. It's not too much. Perfect autumnal dinner. Our last budget recipe is this beetroot, tomato and vegan feta puff pastry tart. This is more of a light dinner and definitely a good one for lunch as well. So first you want to chop up your beetroot into little rounds and your cherry tomatoes in half. Add that into a bowl with some olive oil, salt and pepper. Give that a nice mix and then also add in a few herbs. Um, we've gone for oregano, parsley, thyme and basil but any mixed dried herbs will work here. Then you're going to lay that out on a baking tray and pop that into the oven to cook for about 15 minutes until everything is nice and soft and slightly charred. We are using the vegan little puff pastry that we bought in our little food shop that we did last week and um, it's not the most easy thing to unravel like every other pastry that I've tried just it unwraps really easily but it's kind of sticking to itself which is not ideal, um, but yeah, hopefully it tastes good. Once you've rolled out your puff pastry, you're going to want to cut it into four rectangles to make little individual tarts. And then we've just folded in the edges about a centimetre or so and pushed it down to create a nice little border so that when it puffs up, you can put your toppings in the middle and then you've got a nice kind of thick crust. 
Then don't forget to prick the pastry with a knife or a fork and give it a nice little glaze with some almond milk. You're going to bake that in the oven for 25 minutes and then we like to top ours with some hummus. Once it's cooked it kind of doesn't really taste like hummus, it's more like a kind of creamy cheesy flavour. And then once you've removed your beetroot and tomato from the oven, you're going to place that on top of the hummus. So about three or four rounds of beetroot and then the little tomato halves. And then we also like to sprinkle on a little bit of fresh rosemary. Then pop that back in the oven just to warm up again. Everything's cooked, so it's, it's literally just to heat it through. Take it back out, plate it up, and we've topped ours with some Lidl vegan feta, which was very tasty, and some pomegranate seeds, which they also sell at Lidl. And then we've served it with a very simple uh, new potato salad with some herbs and some greens on the side. This is one of our favourite meals because it's just something that's so easy to make. You can just grab whatever vegetables you've got in the fridge and pop it on some puff pastry. So thanks so much for watching this video. We really hope you enjoyed some of these dinners. We hope we've inspired you a little bit, given you some ideas for what you might want to cook for dinner. And if you want some more budget-friendly ideas, go and watch our little food shop from last week because it goes through all the things that we bought for this, um, for these meals, including all the lunches and breakfasts as well. So go and check that out um, and you can follow the meal plan as well if you fancy it and if you want even more than that we've got plenty of other videos available on our we channel do. as lots well lots of other budget food shops budget recipes yeah. and we'll link them here so if you like vegan recipes food shops all of that sort of stuff hit subscribe because you don't want to miss any of the videos that we'll be putting out and we will see you next week bye